Um, but but every good director that I've worked with has always based what they're going to do uh, off of what they see the actors do without any direction at all. You know, just go. The direction is go. Uh, and, that, and that's always a sign of a, of a good director. Who can, because you, you want, you know, the, you just want it to be as spontaneous and as sort of motivated by the characters as, as possible, you know. And then if you get a guy sort of standing in a shadow, you can, hey, can you, can you take a couple of feet to your step over to the right, you know, maybe by the window? Um, and you can kind of nudge people around and, and, and sort of get, get, it, get it into a, a shape. You know. Does that answer the, I forgot what the question was. Do you have any stories about some of the uh, main actors you worked with? Maybe Burt Reynolds? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pause, please. Um, no, I, I, you know, I was a young guy. I didn't know a lot of people, and um, and uh, you know, I made made a lot of friends on that movie. Um, but for me, it was all like one big. You know, it was amazing you know, just to watch this this movie get made. I hadn't seen that a lot, and. Uh, and then the, the, the spontaneity and the, the fun that everybody was having just made it all the more exciting. Um, speaking of Burt Reynolds, we did, a, we did a scene at the, <laughs> well, first of all, I, you know, never, never assume that you've got, uh, you know, the day off. Because I thought I had a three-day weekend. We we're going to shoot this party scene. Um, where Dirk Diggler can't get it up and he comes out and, and they're around the pool and he's like, it's my big dick and we're gonna fucking shoot right now, right? And, um, and they're like, you know, go home, you know, take it easy, Dirk, go, go home. And then, and then there's a kind of like a, a, a tussle ensues and, and, uh, and I was just in the background, you know, I wasn't even in the damn scene to begin with. But, so I thought I had the day off, so I had a three-day week and I flew to New York. Um, well. Hi, hi, Harlow. Hi, baby. Stick your tongue out at me. So I flew to New York to see a, to see a friend, and, and as soon as I got off the plane, uh, I got a message on my phone saying, your call time is at 5 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> Literally had to turn around, back from my friend's apartment, catch a cab, go back to the airport, buy, buy a ticket on the red eye, and fly back to LA. I landed in LA, uh, you know, early in the morning, and uh, took a cab to to set, where I was then sort of in the background of, of this fucking scene. <laughs> but it was actually kind of cool because you know you're never really in the background in a Paul Thomas Anderson film. I'm sitting on the couch, and I'm just supposed to be sitting with Dirk Diggler, and we're supposed to be like you know cutting up some shit, and. Uh, and I knew some speed dealers at the time, so and I yeah so and I knew that and I knew that like the language that they used with this uh, with this stuff and I started throwing that into the into the the scene and you, and it's in the scene whatever crazy crap it's some, something about carpet dope something about carpet dope it, it, so I, I just started spouting that stuff off and and that ended up in the movie so that was cool. But the, the other scene that we shot was the scene where Dirk comes out and he starts yelling at, at Burt Reynolds and, and Burt Reynolds. And then, he, so Paul tells me, okay, when the scene's over, you know, and you're kind of standing behind Dirk and, and Philip Seymour half off him is there looking kind of scared. But when the scene's over, you know, and Dirk runs away, why don't you fuck with Burt Reynolds a little bit? You know, just like fuck with him, like get in his face, like fucking try to maybe start a fight. And, uh, so take take one, right? Dirk Dirk comes out. He says, "It's my big dick, and we're gonna, you know, shoot." And he's like, "No, no, go home, dude." And then Dirk storms out. And the rest of the cast leaves, and I just stand there. And and Burt Reynolds, he looks at me. And he's like, "The fuck do you want?" And I and I and I started fucking with him. You know, I said, "Yeah, motherfucker, you know, fuck." And I pushed him, right? Burt Reynolds turned around. He fucking kicked me in the nuts. Boom! Kicks me in the oh fuck, right? And then we get we get into it like like you know start start fighting, <laughs> and uh, well 
I was like, what? You know, I was like, wow, he must be a pretty good actor, you know? Like, <laughs> no, man, he thought the take was over and I was a punk actor getting in his face. He thought it was over. Paul Thomas Anderson didn't tell Burt Reynolds that we were fucking doing a little improv after the fucking scene was over, right? Next, the next day in the paper, it said, Mark Wahlberg and Burt Reynolds get in a fight on set. <laughs> and uh, to, to his credit, he also uh, he gave me a bottle of champagne. I don't, I don't drink champagne, but thanks. You know, but it was cool. He, he, he left me a bottle of something in, in the trailer the next day. And, and, and he actually uh, turned out to be really really cool. The other m great memory I have of Boogie Nights is during that big party scene with the, you know, the, the big, long steady cam shot where you had all the actors there and it's New Year's Eve or whatever it is. And, and um, well, you know, that, that took forever to shoot. It took all night, maybe, maybe a couple of nights, I can't remember, to shoot this one steady cam shot. So all the actors would sit around with really nothing to do and they're all kind of bullshitting in, the, in this house in the middle of nowhere. And instead of going to his trailer, Burt Reynolds would hang out. And you know, we're all young actors, and we all started talking to him. And I remember we were all sitting on the living room floor, you know, waiting for them to set up. And we're all these young guys and girls sitting on the floor, and Burt sitting in a, like a, a, a big, you know, puffy chair. And and he started telling us uh, stories about being a young actor in New York City. And uh, you know, running into Marlon Brando and auditioning for stuff, and not being able to get work because he looked just like Marlon Brando, and, which, which you know, I mean, uh, it, it, which is true, but um, it was really fun to uh, to sit. I mean, we sit there for a couple hours and just just hear Burt Reynolds tell all these neat stories, and and for some reason that really stuck with me. You know, that, that's that was a really neat moment. To, uh, it's kind because of, it's an oral tradition. This acting stuff, this this theater acting. You know, this is an oral tradition. It's it's something that's passed down from person to person, from actor to actor. You know, that's how actors learn. It's how we learn our craft, and and it's how it's you know we're literally standing on the shoulders of all the guys that have come before us. And I kind of saw that link, you know, uh, up close and. And personally, um, watching Bert kind of share his his experience with us, and, and uh, it was it was a neat moment for us. Yeah. Okay. Want to watch a movie? I'm gonna take a couple audience questions if you're yeah, cool sure. with that. Yeah. Anyone have a question for Tom? Okay. Let's watch a movie. Yeah. We have one question. Yeah. Well, Yeah, the firecracker stuff? Yeah, that was almost there was nothing happening at the time. He was sort of growing and kind of added later on. Something. Yeah, you know, for the first, like, day, it was firecrackers. Uh, and by the way, that was a friend of Paul's. That was not in the scene. That, that <laughs> guy was not in the scene. You know, and literally we're sitting there, you know, doing the scene, and suddenly this small Asian boy shows up and starts... <laughs> Going firecrackers, yeah, I was like, and, and so and he got you know for that first couple of takes, maybe first take, he got the reaction that he wanted, and people were like, what the fuck, <laughs> you know, from the actors, which was really cool. But then we had to recreate that for the next three days, <laughs> you know, from all the different angles and stuff. You know, you can tell, you know, uh, you know, after about eh, maybe the first 20, 30 firecrackers that go off here. You know, you're, you're, you're kind of, but then after that, man, it's like, you know, you can't even hear anymore, so it doesn't matter. So Paul brought a, a, a starting pistol in, and we used the starting pistol for a little while, then that got old. Uh, <laughs> you know, and we, were try, we were trying everything, but, but, but that, that was an interesting moment. I, I remember he brought in a big couple of boards, and he was slapping those together. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was interesting, it, but it was an uh, awesome part of the scene, you know? I mean, the scene was brilliant to begin with, but then to bring that fucking kid in and having him throw in those firecrackers, the tension just, you know, you just fucking made your skin crawl. I beat the fuck out of that guy. What the fuck? You know, that was, that was really, really fun. Um, yeah. 
Well, my last question for you is, I'm just curious, had you seen Hard Eight before you started working with Tom? Did they screen it maybe or uh, something? You know, cast? yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, Paul had a screening of Hard Eight. I don't think the movie had actually come out yet uh, when we started filming Boogie Nights. Am I right about that? Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, the movie hadn't come out, so, but he said, you know, let's watch my, my first film, and, and we got a theater together, and, and we, the cast and, and the crew showed up and, and all watched Hard Eight. You know, and we're thinking, yeah, this is pretty good. You know, this guy, you know, yeah, you know, he's, he's not stupid. This, this will be, this will, this should be a good movie. You know, from to my eye, I mean, I was like, yeah, this guy's talented. You know, but nothing like the way Boogie Nights turned out. And and I used to go and hang out in the editing room uh, with Paul and watch him put the movie together, and that was really fun. You know, with Dylan, and um, you know, they're just sh showing showing us different scenes or showing, you know, and, and I, but I used to kind of hang out and watch because I always knew I wanted to be a filmmaker. Uh, and uh, the other guy that let me do that is Frank Darabont. You know, he used to go and, when he was doing The Mist, I, I'd, I'd show up every day like it was a job, you know. I was like, you said I could come. <laughs> you said sure, you know, he's like, yeah, but most of nobody comes. <laughs> nobody really comes, <laughs> you know. But, it, but it, he was really, really cool about it. Anybody else got a, a question or? Yeah, in the back. In the back. When you were approaching Todd, was the first he like, uh, was preparing a voice or a walker movement and stuff? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, what was what was a what did I what was the first kind of thing that I that I worked on with Todd Parker? I know that I know that I I was uh, I think that Paul cast me in the film because I rem I got the feeling that I reminded him of that asshole kid in high school you know that that was that was like that and and that and that that and it reminded me of the asshole kid in, in my high school you know that was Todd Parker um, but the truth was I was not that guy at all you know I was the op I was the guy painting the, the theater sets you know and I played football and, but I was the, you know I was the guy with a but yes, I had a 69 Camaro, and I used to kind of race it a little bit. You know, but this was in the backwoods of Maryland. I mean, we were, we were, um, you know, we, we weren't assholes. But, uh, um, you know, I used to take the script, and I'd take it down to my little theater on Hyperion, and get the other actors to play all the roles, and we would we would sit and we would rehearse the uh, the scenes, and we kind of do the scenes in our kind. We had like an acting class once a week down there at the theater, and uh, I would bring in the script, and we would just do scenes from the script, and it was there fucking around with you know, and we, you know, I'd bring in funny glasses or you know do my hair crazy, you know, trying all this different stuff, or, you know, bringing a, like, flowered shirt. I mean, I, I didn't have any clue about sort of who this guy was. I just knew that I was trying to find him. And, uh, and then um, I think it was, you know, it was, it just clicked in one, one day. I think it was the voice, you know, just doing the, doing the, um, the scenes in my little theater on Hyperion. And I think the first thing is an actor that, that, that I found was the way that Todd talked. And once I found that, every, everything else, which usually happens with a role that you care about, uh, is uh, you'll find one little uh, element, you know, a walk, a voice, a mustache. Uh, and, uh, and that'll kind of, everything else will kind of un unfold from that. But I think it, it was the voice with, with Todd Parker. Good question. All right. Well, Anybody else? All right. Thanks well, for having me. Yeah.